So my name is Abdus Salam, and I'm a multidisciplinary artist uh, from Cape Town, South Africa. I spent most of my uh, latter childhood uh, in Riversdale, living on a farm with my mother. Because we had actually no electricity and no running water on the farm, uh, I spent most of my time outdoors, and I would play with the, the mud by the lake and make little sculptures and I would always use my watercolors and make little watercolor paintings and it's always just been a, a, an intrinsic part of my of my being. I also I lived in Los Angeles for 15 years and uh, also practiced mostly as a musician uh, the arts there and uh, the difficult part was committing to the art world because I um, actually I didn't study art at all so yeah I'm a self-taught artist. I'm inspired within my own intuition, but when it comes to artists from the past, I would say that Agnes Martin, Atel Adnan, certain elements of Rothko's practice, and also the timeless aesthetics that were created during the golden era of the Muslim empires. So as a multidisciplinary artist, I typically start from a poetic um, point. So the works are conceptual, in that I write a lot of poems, and as I write the poems, I think, how can I visualize something that is so ethereal and so sort of untouchable, but can be expressed through poetry? And then, as I begin the process of making, my intention is to make a sacred object, is to make an object that is uh, timeless and an object that is really resonant for people, so whether it's in their home or whether it's in an institution or wherever it might be, it has a deeply sacred presence and um, it instills a sensation of peace or it instills a sensation of awe or a sensation of focus, presence. So for the most part my practice is a synergy of natural beauty and uh, spiritual mysticism. So as a practicing Muslim and as someone who grew up on a farm and is constantly inspired by the beauty of nature, I attempt to uh, bring these two things together because in reality everything is so simple but we tend to complicate everything to such an extent that we sort of end up chasing our own tails. And I feel like nature is there to remind us of the fact that life is really just so simple. And there are so many simple truths and simple beauties that exist within nature. And it's also just a banquet, it's a bounty of inspiration, you know. So because I, I focus on so many different mediums and I focus on so many different ways of expressing what is essentially the same sacred sensation, I uh, prepare all of my own canvases, cut the wood, uh, coat the wood, stretch the canvases. I prepare all of my own uh, epoxies, all of my own uh, stones. I work uh, entirely by myself. I find that it enables me to instill the utmost authenticity into my work. And I feel that the best collectors and the best I can feel that and see that. It's not something that can be replicated with someone else's hands, if that makes any sense. Because the reality of the artwork is a reality that I experience. And so that experience is then handed over to this physical object. Um, and so whether it be oil paints or acrylic ink or epoxy or crystal stone sculptures or steel, whatever it might be, the most important aspect of my work is that there is a true authentic intention within the work and that I'm able to translate that poetic intention or that untouchable sensation into this object for other people to benefit from and for other people to experience. I actively steer away from representation as much as I can because I feel like abstraction brings us the closest we can come to the sensation of nothingness, the closest we can come to this feeling of unknown, like what is it and what is it saying and what's its whole purpose, but at the same time also it has to be recognizable because if, 
If it doesn't have a reference point, then no one will ever know what it is. It will be completely, you know, unknowable. I hope that when people encounter my work, the experience is authentic. So whatever the experience might be, um, I've had people see my work and say, oh, this is not for me. And I've had people say, oh, you know, but both of those are authentic. And, and that's really what, what I hope will happen because I know that there's a subconscious reality that might not be as reactive outwardly. And that subconscious reality is where the work will stay within them. And perhaps the work will, will have a longer life within someone's subconscious than with, within their conscious mind. However, if somebody has it in their home or has it in an institution or something like that, I, I would hope that all of my work maintains a sense of sacredness and a, a sense of direction. If you notice, all of my work directs you either inward or upward. I never take you down. And so for me, that's extremely important because I find that contemporary existence tends to bring us down as much as it possibly can, emotionally, physically, whatever it might be. And so my intention is that I'm able to make this world a more beautiful place and also a more conscious place.